I'm Tom Vassell, and we get asked a lot of questions here on the Dice Tower. In fact, I do a Q&A every week, practically, and answer lots of people's questions. But some questions are asked all the time. So I've already done a written FAQ on the internet with these answers, but I thought I would do a verbal one, too, so that this just answers a lot of questions that people ask. So, without further ado, here we go. First of all is... How do I get a game reviewed by the Dice Tower, and what's the fee? I get emailed this a lot. Well, first of all, there is no fee for us to do a review. Mark Street is currently doing paid previews of Kickstarter games on the Dice Tower, but for just a review of a game, all you got to do is send us the game. Email me. I'll also let you know the address. But that is pretty much the extent of it. Now, I always tell people a couple things. First of all, it has to be a published game. It has to be a game that people can get. So if you're like, oh, I only made 20 copies. Now, I'm not looking for a game you made yourself. I want a game that's actually published. Uh, and it has to be after Kickstarter. And you have to realize we have a humongous queue of games. We don't review every game we get, but if you look at our track record, we do review quite a few of them. All right, what about the seals of approval and the seals of excellence? Well, a seals of approval and seals of excellence, we get the games that we highly recommend people get. The seal of approval is very good. It's any game that we rate a seven or an eight. Very good games, games we think are lots of fun. The seal of excellence is even higher than that, an 8.5 up through a 10. These are like the best of the best games. So seal of excellence, just highly recommended. We're gonna probably be adding a few seals as time goes by for other things. And we also have a kids seal too, and that's a game I think is fun to play with kids. Then, I get a lot of times where people will ask me, when are you gonna reveal, review this game? When, you know, why haven't you reviewed this game yet? Well, we have a lot of games that come through. There are thousands of games that come out in a year. We can't review all of them. Even between me and the stable of reviewers that we have here, we literally can't review every game. We try, we try to review all the big releases. But I don't really announce when we're gonna review a game usually because sometimes we need to play it more, sometimes things happen. So we will get to them as quickly as we can. And sometimes we don't review games because they're not family friendly. It would be hard for us to review the game in a, not, in a, for example, Cards Against Humanity, there's a lot of uh, very uh, adult language in that. I wouldn't be able to review the game without showing the cards and stuff, so there's no real good way to review that game. So not every game gets reviewed. And sometimes I just we re don't review games because it doesn't look interesting to us. Many times I get asked from someone says, I like this game and this game. Which one's better? What game should I buy? What do you think of this game? I get a lot of emails like that. If you email me and I don't answer you, or if you even ask in a live Q&A, I don't answer you, please don't take it personally. It's not because I don't wanna help you all, but we get lots and lots of these requests. I don't know you. So, I mean, one of the reasons is just time, right? But the other reason, I don't know you, so I don't know which of these games will be best for you. And thirdly, we already do lots of top tens and reviews, and the whole point of those is so that you can go watch those and see if the game is good for you. Um, and that's why we do the top 10 lists and things like that. All right, what's my re role in regards to Dice Tower Con and other things? So first we'll start with Dice Tower Con. For Dice Tower Con, I don't actually run the convention. Patrick Havert runs Dice Tower Con. Uh, he puts it together, runs that show. I'm what I would consider to be the host of Dice Tower Con. So when I come there, I put on all the shows at Dice Tower Con. I, I am very much involved in all the different things that go on there. I have some oversight to the convention itself. Um, and it, I'm trying to shape the convention to what my image of a good game con would be, but ultimately all credit goes to Patrick and his helpers for putting that together. And so the finances of the con and stuff are dealt with by them. Um, the finances for the Dice Tower itself are coming from our Kickstarter that we run each year and other things. What about the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund? Uh, well, you can't see the you can see the, just the top of the icon here in this picture, but the D Jack Vassal Memorial Fund is not part of the Dice Tower. I'm president of both, but they're two separate things. The Jack Vassal Memorial Fund is because my son, Jack Vassal, uh, died, as of me recording this, seven years ago, and the board gaming community helped me out a lot financially, and so I wanted to give back to other people. And so it's a way where you can, you can go to the website, jackvassal.org, and you can donate to uh, to help others in need. And then if someone's in need, they can go to that same website and say, here's my need. We have a committee of different people in the board game industry. We look at it and when we, if, if, if they are truly in need, we will send them the money. 
How many times do you replay a game before reviewing it? I get asked this often, and my answer is always the same, as many times as it takes. Now you'd say, oh, that's snarky answer, you know? But yeah, it kind of is. But the fact is, is we don't list how many times we play a game for several reasons. One, it's different for every game. Two, it's probably less than you think it needs to be. By that I mean, there's always gonna be, no matter how many times we play it, someone's gonna think it's not enough for us to have given that game a fair critique. I also feel like we're pretty good at reviewing games at this point in time. <laughs> I'm sure lots of people disagree. And that we have a pretty good grasp and can understand whether we like a game or not pretty quickly into the plays of a game. But the fact is, is we just don't do it because it would distract and it would just be a use as a counterpoint for why we did not like or did like the game. What do you do with the games that you don't keep after you review them? Well, many of them go to people here at the Dice Tower or people who play the games with us because they have to play a lot of bad games, so sometimes they get some good ones as rewards. Uh, and the rest, um, I don't send them through the mail or, any, or donate them to different people. I get asked it a lot because just shipping them all over the place is kind of a pain. So uh, we funnel them out. We've been in the past doing it through Dice Tower Con where we did a flea market there. Um, we're looking for some other way to do it in the future. How many games are in your collection? Around 350. That number goes up or down a little bit, but I only have so much room in my collection and I don't have, I don't really want a ton of games because you can only play so many games. So a lot of people take this, you know, if I say a game is really good and I don't put my collection, well, again, I kind of have a hard limit. So it has to be better than a game that's currently in my collection to replace it. And that number is going to get more fierce and, you know, really kind of hotly, you know, wow, it gets harder to get into that collection every year because so many games come out. What's this about Korea? Well, I was in South Korea as a teacher and a missionary there for just under 10 years. I went there in 2001 and we were there. I, I went for six months, but it turned into a much longer thing. I originally went there teaching English as a second language and eventually was teaching high school math in a secondary school. Really, really like Korea. As of now, I live in Homestead, Florida, which is the most southern city in America and the continental U.S. What does shut the door mean? Uh, I accidentally said it like in a video. I told one of my kids to shut the door or whatever, and then it just became kind of a meme. If you're like, what are you talking about, shut the door? Well, if you watch to the end of most Dice Tower reviews, it's there. What's the name of the Dice Guy in the Dice Tower videos? Well, he's Chuck, that's the name of him, and then uh, we always get asked, what does he say when he falls down? Nothing. It's just gibberish. I know people think it's something, but the person that did it was just like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Is Sam that mean in real life? No. Is Z that funny in real life? Yes. Are they both great friends? Yes. And I'm glad to have them. How can I be involved in the Dice Tower? All right. Well, many people ask this question. You want to be involved in Dice Tower. You want to do reviews. You want to be on one of our shows. Or you just want to be involved somehow. Well, if you want to be involved, the best way to be involved is to email me with a very specific thing you would like to be involved with. Because if you email me and say, I'm just willing to help, I don't know that I necessarily have something that you can do. But if you're saying, I'm willing to do this, there are many people. The Dice Tower is a conglomerate of hundreds of people who do all sorts of things, some of them behind the scenes, and I really appreciate each and every person. Um, if you want to put a video on the Dice Tower reviews or one of our segments, you have to email me and send a sort of audition. We're getting a little bit more picky as time goes by because we have so many excellent things on there. But it's just a way that you can do it. You can always email us at uh, info at dicetower.com. What conventions are you going to? Well, this changes every year, so I usually post a list somewhere on our website, or I do a video each year about that. But we almost always go to Gen Con and Essen, Dice Tower Con and Dice Tower Cruise. Those are four that you know, you'll definitely see us at. And then we're usually at UK Games Expo, Gamma, Origins, PAX Unplugged, and... Um, MeepleCon, and there's a, but then there's other little conventions that we go to that will change from year to year. How tall am I? 6'4", and I tell this to people because every time I meet people, they're like, you didn't seem that tall in video, or you, I, I guess I sound short and look short on here. How many kids do I have? I have seven children, six girls and a son. Here's a question I get asked all the time. When is this game coming out? Is this game getting a reprint? Can you tell us some secret information that no one else knows? Well, here's the deal. No to the secret information. And it's the company's job to tell you when games come out. Now, we have a website called Dice Tower News where we talk about the news all the time. And when, as soon as we find out, we post it there. But if you come up to me and be like, do you have any information? 
Well, if I did, we've already given it to you. Uh, and if I haven't, then either I don't know, or I know, but I can't tell you yet. So either one is not gonna be very satisfying. Here's what I already mentioned on this a little bit. You said you really liked game so-and-so, but it wasn't in your top 100 or in your collection. At this point, I think I've played five to 6,000 games, a ton of games. So being in my top, let's just say it's 5,000. 100 out of 5,000 is one out of every 50 games makes it in there. That is not very many games. That's a very high standard, and I can like a lot of games that just don't make it in. And again, I don't have room for all these games in my collection. What is Vassal's Law? Vassal's Law is, uh, I guess I should read it here. If a game is truly a great game and is out of print, it will eventually, usually within 10 to 15 years, be reprinted and if a game isn't reprinted and no one's interested in reprinting it, it wasn't that great of a game. There's some exceptions, legalities and IP problems can prevent this from happening. And maybe there's another version of the game out there so people aren't going to print the original one out there. So what's the practical application of this? If there's a great game and everyone's like telling you this game is amazing, you need to go spend $200 to get it. You, you, you don't. First of all, there's thousands of great games out there already. Secondly, if it's that amazing, it will come back in a print. And Vassal's Law can almost be compounded to, if the game was decent, it's probably going to be reprinted. Because there's lots of games these days being reprinted, and I'm going, huh, I never expected to see that reprinted. There's a lot of reprinting going on. There's a lot of games out there. Well, that's it. That's it for my FAQ. I'm sure that there are other questions that I'm not putting on this that I probably should that I get asked all the time, but I thought I'd give you a chance to hear some of the answers to those. Don't forget, I do a weekly Q&A each week, and you can come and ask all sorts of questions there, and you never know, I just might answer them. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassal, and this has been The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.